The controversy over the identity of Mary Magdalene has continued since the early church. Her identity has often been a topic of discussion, and it is often debated whether she was a prostitute, anointer, weeper, sinner, or something else. For centuries, the mystery of one woman has caused debate in the religious and historical world. To describe her identity is almost impossible. In artwork, Mary has been depicted in a variety of different ways. However, she is commonly recognizable by certain features, such as her long, loose red hair, elaborate clothing, tears, and kneeling position. But most importantly, her ever-present unguent jar. Mary Magdalene is a symbol of metanoia and metamorphosis. As she changes, so does her essential jar. It has been depicted as a variety of receptacles including alabaster jars, golden chalices, glass flasks, elaborate perfume bottles, and simple porcelain containers. The Bible has identified her as the sinful woman who anoints Jesus' feet. Visual representations often portray her on her knees weeping over them and repenting her sins. As a penitent, Mary is depicted as tearful, disheveled, and contorted. In this case, her jar signifies the anointment which purifies and protects the anointed from disease and sin. When associated with scriptural anointment, this jar indicates repentance. In her sinful state, Mary Magdalene and her jar are portrayed very differently. When her jar is depicted as an elaborate perfume bottle, the jar is a symbol of her previous life of sin and pleasure. Perfumed ointments in her jar heighten association of sin with sexual licentiousness. Usually when Mary is associated with sin in an elaborate perfume bottle, she's dressed in flamboyant red, a color with all sorts of connotations. Red is often associated with passion, the allure of a sinful woman, and lust. The Bible noted that she once had a severe illness in which evil spirits or demons supposedly entered her body. Additionally, many scholars link this illness to her sexuality. Any depiction that was meant to show her before her religious conversion shows her dressed in sumptuous clothing to imply her status as a wealthy woman. Again, her wealth and luxurious nature is accompanied by an ornamented jar that is likely filled with expensive perfume. In this image, Mary is portrayed in elaborate clothing, which contrasts sharply with the simplicity of most women of her time. However, the discarded jewelry and her slumped figure imply to the viewer that she has reached a turning point in her transformation. In this image, Mary seems to be reading quietly, repenting her sins, and spending time in reflection. Here, the jar is small, white, and lidded. Another important possibility to consider is the association of Mary's jar with Pandora's box when its lid is open. According to Greek mythology, the first woman on earth, Pandora, was given a box that she was not to open under any circumstances. Too curious to resist, she opened it and all of the evils of the world flew out, such as hate, pain, destructiveness, and starvation. When Pandora saw what she had done, she closed the box before the last thing in there could escape. That last thing was hope. In a world full of sin and temptation, Mary Magdalene sought to change her immoral identity in search of a life of faith and devotion. Perhaps at the bottom of Mary Magdalene's jar lay the hope of a new, sin-free life as a follower of Jesus.